apple brandy let me show you how today we have a bushel of apples and we're going to use about 12 to 15 pounds of sugar depending on the specific gravity we're cutting them up into quarters cutting any real bad bruises or any moldy stuff out it's going to be cooked on high pressure so don't worry about sterilization we got these apples from an apple orchard they're actually apples that they discarded because of bruises, cut, spots. So we were given these free and they were gonna throw them out to the animals and we're gonna use a byproduct basically to make something good. I didn't go spend $40 on apples to turn into a wine. You can use pressed apples that have been used for cider. You can use this, but I chose to do it this way. So we're just gonna quarter these into quarters and throw them in here. This pot is filled a third of the way, which this is a two and a half gallon uh, pressure cooker. So we're gonna fill it about a third of the way with about a gallon of water, chop it up and bring it about two inches from the top and run it through the rice setting on the cooker for eight minutes. So it takes about an hour and a half to cool down and everything and we'll turn it into an applesauce and pour it into our 12 gallon plastic food grade bucket. I'm gonna fast forward chopping up the apples, but just cut out bad spots. So like this one, probably gonna be a lot of brown inside if it, it's not moldy, it won't hurt it. If it is moldy, feed it to the deer. Something like this, I would just cut it out, cut it into quarters, and fill up to about two inches. Just to note, we are actually making apple wine. Then we're gonna take that apple wine and turn it into an apple brandy. Did you know you can reuse the pulp liquid and back set to cook your next grain recipe? And if you use at least 51% corn, you can make a sour apple bourbon. So there you have it. It's about an inch and a half, two inches from the top. Water's about halfway up. You don't wanna overfill it. This is a pressure cooker. You need room for expansion so it doesn't blow out. You have to make sure the bottom's good and dry. We're going in the cooker. Again, we're gonna be using the pressure cooker. This cooks about two and a half gallons. So it's equal to your big stock pot. You could do the same thing. You could uh, put about two and a half gallons in a stock pot, put about a half a bushel in there, stir and cook until it gets real softened up and then mush it up. It's here, you just set it on the table. You drop your pot in, put this on pressure. Two dots are lined up. When it comes on, simply push rice. It'll be eight minutes, high pressure, and it starts. It literally will take about 20 minutes to heat up. It'll cook for eight minutes and depressurize probably for the next 20 minutes. You can release the steam, rush it. I just let it sit until it's done. It'll keep it warm. I come back in an hour or so, and we'll go ahead and use a stick blender. We'll be back in about an hour and a half. It's been about three hours. We're back. We're going to open up the lid and we're going to stick blend this and dump it into our barrel. It looks beautiful. Look at the water. It sucked a lot of the sugars out. We're going to use just a standard stick blender, but I'm not going to hit the bottoms and the sides because I don't want it to scratch the coating in this pot. So that took about one minute to get it like applesauce. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this into our big bucket. And we'll repeat this process about three more times to get the bushel of apples into applesauce into this big tub. This is a 12 gallon food grade container. No scorching, no sticking. Exactly what I'm looking for. So we're gonna go ahead and do this three more times. And we'll come back and I'll show you how we adjust the specific gravity and get ready to mix it. We're on our last batch of apples. This will conclude the whole bushel. I've added the rest of the apples in the bushel, added about a little over half a gallon of water. And let's get creative. We're gonna go ahead and add a little spice to this, so we're gonna put some unmalted rye right in on top of the apples. Approximately about one cup. It'll add a little bit of spice to the uh, recipe. I have about a cup of malted barley. In the 12 gallon barrel, the applesauce is roughly 150 to 155 degrees. So we're gonna crush this up a little bit after we dump it in with a stick blender. And we're just gonna let that mix in with the 155 degree applesauce. I don't know what it's gonna do, but we're gonna try it. It may convert, may not, but it should have a little barley and rye to this recipe. And this pot is approximately 12 pounds of white sugar and two pounds of light brown sugar. We're gonna add that into the barrel as well. And then we'll take a specific gravity reading at the end when we come back. I'll see you in about an hour and a half, two hours, and then we'll pitch the yeast, hopefully tonight or in the morning. So we're gonna see what it looks like. This has been done for a couple hours and I'm letting it cool the room temperatures to help cool down the mash. In this case, the uh, wine that we're making, this will cool it down 
and get it ready to pitch the yeast. So we'll be back in about an hour and a half. We're back. The last batch is done. This one has the rye in it. We're gonna go ahead and chop this one up. Just know, one bushel of apples equals five gallons of mash once it's siphoned off. So we're gonna go ahead, and we're gonna pour in this dissolved sugar, 11 pounds of white sugar and two pounds of brown sugar. We're gonna use our refractor. Go ahead and take a starting gravity. I'm coming up with 1.087. By the time I add more water to bring it up, Another inch or two, which is another gallon and a half, two gallon. This should bring it down to 1.07 to 1.08. Temperature is 131 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and add cold water to try to bring the temperature down so we can start pitching the yeast in. 1.077, so perfect. We still have about two and a half, three inches of head space for the foam and stuff so that it doesn't bubble over. Well, let's take a temperature reading and see how close we are to pitching the yeast. It's 121 degrees, so I'm gonna leave it for about an hour and let it cool down. So we'll come back in about an hour, check it. When we get down to around 100 degrees, we're gonna go ahead and pitch the yeast. You can pitch it a little lower than that. I'll check it an hour to two hours and see what we have. 7.30 a.m. the next morning. We're gonna take a temperature reading and see if we can go ahead and pitch the yeast. 92 degrees on top. We're right at 100 degrees, so we're gonna go ahead and pitch the yeast. This is the yeast we're gonna be using. It's more for fruits and uh, champagne and stuff. It's an EC1118. We'll leave you the link. Normally you just leave the top off for 10, 15 minutes, let it start to foam. And then I just put the lid on, but I don't lock it. I just set it on there so it holds in place so the air can escape. I don't stir at all. I just let it go for about two weeks. Cap will drop and then I'll take a Specific gravity reading, we have it down around 0 0.099 or 1.0. I go ahead and run it. Me personally, I usually drain it off and let it rack off and settle another week or two. I'm in no rush, all of it, but you can run it after about 10 days to two weeks, depending on finish. This is one I did seven days ago. It's got a good cap on it, it's still working. You wait for that stuff to settle to the bottom, and then you know it's about done. This one here simply had about almost three quarters of a bushel of apples, 15 pounds of sugar, and yeast. That's all that went into that one. What we're doing now, I added a cup of unmalted rye and a cup of malted barley. As you can see, it's starting to foam. That's a very good sign. In a few minutes, I'll go ahead and cover it, and we'll check on it in about 48 hours just to see if the cap is building. We'll see you then. And here it is the next day. Look at the nice cap that's forming. We took the lid off to show you the progress that is happening right now. Another update. This is one week later. As you see, the cap is not ready. It will be ready when it has fallen. Then we will take a specific gravity reading to validate if it is ready to run. Final results. We did this recipe twice, which consisted of two bushels of apples. After proofing this down, we walked away with about two gallons of 125 proof, which is our preferred proof for barrel aging. Start checking this in about two months. You don't want to leave it too long or it can get very oaky. Go and check out the show more below this video. And as usual, share, like, comment, hit the subscribe, hit that bell, all notification. And this is Jersey saying see you on the next video.